Oh, um, so, uh, okay. This country is depending on you, and yes, the pressure's on. The pressure's very on. And if you're wondering what to do, watch Real Chris Sky or get his book, and it says everything in there, and he's not doing it just to sell his book, or he wouldn't spend all his time driving across the country all over teaching us what to do to save ourselves. There's so much you can do, guys, like anything. You can do anything. When there's a will, there's a way. And with man, this is impossible. With God, all, all things are possible. God bless you. Have a great day. Nicola, thank you so much. You're amazing. I love you to death. The people who really stand up in the, in the face of somebody ordering them to do something against their own rights must always be recognized and applauded because that is how, or one of the ways that we push back. Uh, I just got a message. Chris Sky said that he's about eight kilometers away, then even more recently, he's on Dougal, so he's almost right here. Yeah, he's right here, they didn't stop him. They cannot stop Chris Sky. he will be here. I just wanna throw down a few words before he gets here. I want to let everyone know that if you do not consent to the COVID injection, you are exempt by law. Consent is everything in medicine. It's the difference between drugging and medicating. It's the difference between assault and surgery. Consent is such a fundamental part of medicine that choosing not to get the COVID shot for any reason at all in itself renders you medically exempt from all vaccine mandates and policies. Ontario's Healthcare Consent Act says that a health pr practitioner who proposes a treatment for a person shall not administer the treatment and shall take reasonable steps to ensure that it is not administered unless that person has freely given their consent without duress. Repeating that, the Healthcare Consent Act requires doctors to take reasonable steps to prevent non-consensual medical treatment. This is the law. Doctors are supposed to protect their patients. The CPSO, with, which regulates doctors in Ontario, has reportedly been threatening to revoke doctors' licenses for providing these exemption notes. Waiting on Chris the CPSO Scott, is here. corrupt and is bluffing. Finally. The CPSO does not make the law. The CPSO is subject to and must obey the law, including the Health Care Consent Act. Our lawyer friends are flooded with requests. Everybody that's trying to help is overwhelmed. We each must do our part to save ourselves. Here's a strategy that's starting to work. See your doctor, bring the Healthcare Consent Act a copy with you. Ask your doctor to provide an exemption notice on the basis that you do not consent to the COVID injection. If your doctor resists, refer to the law. And if they continue resisting, report your doctor to the CPSO for a consent violation. The CPSO may be corrupt, but if they are confronted with these complaints, they will have to address the law and recognize the law. This will help empower doctors who, side with, who do side with their patients to stand up to the CPSO and to be less afraid of having their licenses taken away. Each one of us has a reason to try to do this individually without asking for a lawyer's help or a lawyer's letter. We can go do this ourselves and it's one option that we can use. However, the solution may be simpler from this, simpler than this. Maybe all we need to do is stand together with our coworkers and friends in our field, people who are with us and do not consent to this injection, and just say no! I want to hear that repeated back. Just say no! gorgeous as you guys know we have one speaker left he's not in my sights quite yet we have two speakers left we've got another couple minutes okay we'll, we'll fit in one more okay Derek's gonna come up here and tell you guys some things oh, you use the ladder. Fine. all right everyone how is everyone doing are you all excited all right, I'm going to be very quick. In the last First three time. weeks, we have gone from our Just provincial them. government saying we will never do vaccine passports. We are not. We are not for a divided society. Then two weeks ago, they said 
Well, that is the federal responsibility. This week, they said, oh, well, we already give a vaccine uh, certificate, so that is good enough. Four days ago, they signed con very con clandestinely into the Reopening Ontario Act the power for every medical officer to issue their own vaccine passports. And in Friday, they just announced, actually, by the way, we're, we are now doing vaccine passports. Boo! 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 But what's, what is the, uh, what's the theme here? Oh, they're lying. They lie. They are not held accountable. We need to. You need to. We can't do it necessarily at the polls, so all of you need to. Do not comply. Any business that enforces this, do not give them your business. They have, they have made their bed. Do not comply. You have friends, you have family. We do not need bars, and the bars that support us are, well, they're our friends. Do not be lied to. It is as simple as that because they have no issue lying in general. They Waiting say on one thing guy. one week, and then they have no accountability, so they will always just keep lying. Do not comply, united non-compliance. Say it! United non-compliance! United non-compliance! You're all beautiful. We are going to have a fantastic speaker very shortly. Take care. Wait till the next speaker. Do you think he had way more words? You'll get goosebumps from the next speaker. Wait till Chris Guy comes. If you don't know who Chris Guy is, you will soon. Okay, folks, it's it's going to happen, and it's going to happen very soon. Now, this is an opportunity for us to network, okay? We know that they're going to try to lock us down again in the fall. We had 1,500 people today. The 401 was blocked. So when we said this week that we expect 3,000 people, there was some credibility to that, okay? We had some skin in the game. We no knew mass. what was going on. So they blocked part of the 401, and that's why our, our crowd is smaller. Right now, if everybody can at least meet one or two new people, get an email, get a phone number, because this is what they don't want us to do. Remember, during the winter when they locked us down, and said, oh, you got to stay in your bubble. They don't want us meeting. They don't the want us going guy. to church. That's what happened Please. at Elmer with Pastor Hildebrand. They tried to shut him down, and he did not. We need to see more of that. So today, try to meet one or two new people. Get an email. See what's going on. Are their jobs being threatened? Are their businesses being threatened? Because this is their worst nightmare. Listen, we all want to hear Chris Sky. This is a blessing in disguise. We have a little bit of time today. Let's do some networking. Let's stick together. If your job is being threatened, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you think getting one vaccine is gonna do it, they're gonna come after you for a second, a third, a fourth. If you're a nurse or a teacher, you stand your ground. It's not easy. You show up for work and you let them fire you, okay? You will get the biggest severance package. We're gonna start our own businesses. Do you know how much money this would cost the provincial government if even half the Nurses Association said, no, you're not going to force us to get vaccinated? What if the teachers banded together and said, you know what, I've paid union dues for the last 10 or 20 years. Who the hell are you to tell me to get vaccinated? You watch how quickly they back up. I'm going to tell you right now, that's, that's how we win. The London Police Association is pushing back against the vaccines. The Toronto Police Association is doing it as well. That's a lot of numbers. They need cops. They need teachers. There's a lot of nurses that would like to speak up, but they cannot. They got families that they got to raise. Guys, I know this is tough. You got mortgage payments. You got kids. But I'm telling you right now, 
The government is scared, okay? Because those vaccination rates are not anywhere near what we're seeing. I'm going to tell you right now, look at what Alberta did. Look how quickly they backed up. And I'm going to tell you, Windsor, Ontario, I grew up here. You guys are the automotive capital of Canada. You always be, you will always be. Woo! You built the best cars, okay? Chrysler, Windsor, Ford, GM, okay? There is spirit in this city. Windsor, Ontario, you are some of the bravest people I have ever met. They, there's too many of us, you guys. Let's stick together. Let's do some networking today. Get some phone numbers. Get some emails. Um... This is, this is how we're going to win. Would anybody like to briefly come up and speak for a moment or two about their experiences, uh, something that's going on in their businesses? Maybe you're worried about what's happening with the kids in the fall because they are threatening them big time. Vaccinated and unvaccinated students. What kind of baloney is that? Is, is this something out of 1984? And they call us conspiracy theorists? These guys are the nut bars. Look at the humidity today. Now, you, when we march, you watch how many people are wearing face diapers outside, okay? In 100 degree Fahrenheit weather. Guys, this is not normal, and we know it's not. Okay, Curry, Curry's got a little bit more to tell you guys, okay? So bear with us, thank you. I was just warned by somebody of the seriousness of our situation and how we are having a potential collectivist society enforced on us. The vaccine passports are easily technologically transformed into a social credit system. And if you know what that is, you know how dangerous that is. It's collectivist and it can lead to people disappearing. And so someone just brought to my attention, he would like everyone, and I think this is a great idea, Keep each other's phone numbers, form circles, form overlapping circles where you all have phone numbers and you start checking up on each other. Maybe, maybe once a week. And just make sure that you keep a strong community. Make sure... ...far it will go. So you may as well do that now. It's not like we're running through the streets panicking. We're just making sure everybody is connected to everybody else and not through social media. No phone numbers, no home addresses. Okay, that is what I got. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we can use Facebook groups, we can use Facebook group chats as a springboard to develop these connections. So if you message me on Facebook and I can put you into a group of people where you can start um, exchanging information, I know several groups that we could, we could put you in and these are Facebook chat groups. I know there's also questioning COVID stuff for Windsor on Telegram. I don't moderate that, but I do moderate the Facebook stuff. So come on in there and start making connections, start getting to know, especially the people that just rub you the right way the most. Make sure the people that you like, that stand out to you, you would know how to contact them if then Facebook and other social media disappeared. Because who knows what'll happen? Maybe they'll cut the internet out on us. It sounds crazy, but it could happen. I think it might even be likely. Okay. We, try. we are waiting on Chris. We have sent some people to get his boxes. Okay, we're going to have Jason come up here. He's going to read a couple signs about his, uh, what we call it, foil hat party. Hello, thanks for listening. Uh, I'm not Shakespeare, but I am the beard. Uh, www.foilhat.party. People may pose for foil hat portraits, except my camera ran out of batteries. Uh, and these photos will be the catalyst for a global project. Their images will be the first added to the 100% free Libra open source gallery. Everyone with a video or images from today, please submit your contact to foilhatparty.party. Uh, with the gallery contents, creative people around the world can make documentaries about this Freedom Rally and Chris Sky, as well as promotional material for future Windsor Resistance rallies. The foilhat.party objectives are 
One, declare a 9-11 uh, foil hat day. Now, you don't have to wear a big foil hat that looks silly. I'm wearing a little star on my hat uh, made out of foil. It's just a signifier. We encourage everyone around the world to add foil to their hat and wear it proudly all day long every September 11th. Hashtag foil hat day. Number two, unify all the people with questions, all skeptics and all conspiracy analysts together, regardless of their differences of opinions, great and small, to agree on a single expression. The official narrative from the authorities, experts, corporate media, and government is not at all accurate. Number three, collect and openly share photo and video portraits of foiled hat people from around the world. These can then be utilized for creative purposes, including promotion of Foil Hat Day and documentaries about skepticism. We're aiming to uh, create some stuff for this 20th anniversary of 9-11. We are proud free thinkers and truth seekers. We are ordinary normal people with courage and convictions to have questions. www.foilhat.party. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jason. We got one more, and I think that might be the very last. We've got Sarah coming up. She's a teacher. She's an awesome teacher. I, we've spoken many times about how much she cares for her students as individuals and, and the things they're going through. I love Sarah very much. Love you too, Curry. How many here are parents? Moms, dads, grandparents? How many here are so are fearful for what's going to happen in a couple weeks with your children and grandchildren? I want you to know that there's a big group of us. Um, as of right now, I'm working with both boards, um, the separate board and the public board, of educators, not only teachers, ECEs, EAs, bus drivers, anyone who's opposed to mandatory vaccine. I'll tell you right now, our union have already declared that they will mandate the vaccine. They will not back us up. I pay union dues. Anyone who works and has a union, you know that we pay those dues every month. I pay a lot of dues. I expect representation from my union, despite what I believe in. I work very hard for my students at the sacrifice of my own family. I have one child left in the school system. I fear for her. Um, being mandated to take a vaccine just to get an education. This is not fair. This is our body where there's risk. There should be choice. And no one chooses for our children. They are our children, not the governments, not the provinces, not the cities, not the school boards. No one. We fight for them. I'm almost 50. I don't give a crap about you know, going to bars, hanging out outside. It's for my children. I lost a child already, unfortunately, to cancer. I'm not losing two more to this idi idiotic government who wants to control my children and your children. Enough! Parents, parents, please, call the schools. Call the schools. High school, grade school, whatever, call them. Say that you will not back down. You support the teacher's choice to be vaccinated or not. I have, most of my colleagues are vaccinated. That's fine, that's their choice. But you're not gonna tell me what to do with my body. So please, call the schools, back us up, back, fight for your children, if not for us, for your children, because they are after them, because they are our future. We need critical thinkers, not left-wing liptards telling them what to think. Enough is enough. Okay, open mic, okay? This is what we, want. we want to hear from you guys. The experts are great, but this is what this is all about. We have Pastor Frank that's gonna come up. Sorry, Pastor Fred is going to come up very shortly and he's gonna to talk to you guys. Ladies and 
Ladies and gentlemen, the man of the hour, Chris Sky has arrived. All right, he was detained for a little while. He doesn't back down. He is a man of his word. He promised he would show up in winter. And to his credit, he has done that. Let's get a, a warm welcome for our friend and freedom fighter, Chris He came from Niagara Falls. They blocked the 401, and Chris Sky came anyway. Chris Sky in the house. Chris Sky is on stage. Chris Sky is going to talk about the medical tyranny. Chris Sky is getting selfies. That's why it's going to be another minute. Chris Sky warned us about face diapers. He warned us about the lockdowns. Let's give it up for Chris, you guys. Right? The one, the only Chris Sky. tough road getting here tougher than normal like usually they wait between arrests this time they had to arrest me back to back in two different provinces in two different days because first in manitoba we exposed ridiculous police corruption that's now documented and they got so embarrassed that the next day they had me arrested in ontario only that time now that i'm out on my six six that's six separate bail all with their own specific freedom crushing conditions on this last one, they tried to take it personal. They tried to make it me sign a form that I wouldn't be allowed to see or be with my wife. Obviously, I, <laughs> yeah. Not being able to drive, not being able to fly, having my guns, le my legally owned guns taken, not being able to be without my surety, without his. talking because I'm still speaking the truth and I'm still letting you all know. They tried to take away what I love more than anything in the world. And that was the biggest mistake they've made this entire pandemic. I want you to think about what you really love in life. Who you really love in life. What would you do to protect those people? What would you do for that freedom? What would you be willing to give up? Everything. Previous generation were really willing to give up their very lives. Our generation, our generation is coerced into mandated vaccines because they might not be able to go to school. Bullshit. Or because they might lose a job. Bullshit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an attitude that we can't, we can't have. You have to focus on what you love. And when you focus on what you love over what they're trying to make you fear, that's when you'll be ready. Sorry. Oh, sorry. That's when you'll be ready for united non-compliance. And they made another huge mistake with this vaccine passport. The same mistake they made with the hotel quarantine. It's so ridiculous, it's so sinister, that it makes absolutely no sense to the point that they unified the entire country against them. And all it took was for someone like me to make a little airport video to show everybody how to assert their rights and freedoms. And it didn't do anything when I did it alone, except it gave you guys the, the knowledge and hopefully the courage and inspiration but when you all did do it with me, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of Canadians, guess what happened? There's no more hotel quarantine.
quarantine. So what do you think is going to happen now with the vaccine passport? I don't care if you're double masked. I don't care if you're double jabbed and you can't wait for your third, fourth, fifth, and sixth shot. Because Oh yeah, by the way, you're never fully vaccinated. Never. But even those people have to understand that the right to choose, our freedom, our rights are not to be trifled with. They are essential. That is not a tagline. That is a building block, fundamental building block of any successful and content society. And if they try to take that away from all of us, which they are trying to do, regardless if you agree with what they're using, vaccines, vaccine passports, you still have to be against the idea of taking away your brother and sisters and grandchildren's freedoms. Woo! Woo! Yeah. It is that simple. That's why we had over 300,000 people on the streets of Montreal to protest that vaccine passport before they even announced it everywhere else. But I told you it was coming. And that's why I came here today. I wanted to tell you guys what's going to happen so you can go and tell everybody you know, especially the ones that have been complying with everything. Because the entire time they've been saying people like me, the non-compliers, are what's prolonging this and what's making it worse or what's causing all the restrictions. In reality, it's obviously the compliers because every time you comply with what they say, they just move the goalposts and ask for something else. You want the most recent example? It's gonna make you really angry because I bet you both of you don't even hear about it yet. You know what the new vaccination target is for herd immunity, according to Ontario Public yeah. Health? Yeah. Vaccination. 100 plus percent of the adult population and over 90 percent of the entire population of Ontario, meaning they want to expand the vaccine program to children under 12. And I guess what happens if they get 100% compliance? There's no resistance to the vaccine passport. And that's what this is all about. If they get 75% compliance, which is more than enough for any herd immunity, it's not enough to steal your rights and freedoms if 25% of Canadians are walking around saying, I still value my rights and freedoms. That's why they're so desperate with this massive push to mandate the jab in federal, private, in students, in teachers, in pilots, everywhere they can because they need over 90% compliance of the population in order to be able to ostracize the remaining few of us that still value our rights and freedoms. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So tell me, is there a political solution to a problem like this? You think you're gonna vote for a politician this election in the next five weeks? No. And all of a sudden, no. Yeah, thank you. And all of a sudden it's all gonna go away. I don't care who your favorite politician is. I don't vote and I don't vote for a reason. All the politicians are full of crap. None of them represent you. They all represent their own interests. And if you doubt that at all, if you doubt that at all, please name me one time in human history, go as far back as you like, where a group of people under tyranny voted their way out of tyranny. Never. That's why none of the politicians, including Maxime Bernier, when I was in Montreal, I invited him up on stage and said, Maxime, if you're really benevolent, if you're about the people, stand with me today and tell them you support United Non-Compliance. They cheered, he didn't show up. <laughs> Why? It's because United Non-Compliance, number one, is the only solution to this problem, and there's three phases and we'll break them down in a minute. But number two, more importantly, it's about giving the power to the people where it belongs. And do you think any politician is going to support that idea? They don't want you to be free. They just want to be the ones to manage the takeover of our country. Let that sink in. There's no such thing as a political freedom rally. There's either a political rally or a freedom rally. And this right here is what we call a freedom rally. Real freedom. Real freedom comes from the people. Comes from the people standing up and just saying no to the things that they know are not right. It's really not much harder than that. If the government gives you an order, like put a diaper on your face, and you know it's not the right thing to do. And by the way, in Ontario, we're the only losers in North America that still have a mask mandate. I've been going all across Canada. She's been all across the United States. I've been to 15 countries in four continents since COVID started. No mask, by the way. And guess what? In Ontario, we have mandates. Even in Manitoba, where they have the most corrupt police force I've ever seen in, ca in Canadian history, and I can say that with Thank conviction. Thank you all for joining. 
They still don't have mask mandates. Places like Alberta and BC ditched their mask mandates like in July. Obviously, they're coming back now because I forgot. We got to tell you all what's going to happen. Big time spoiler alert. And the reason I'm going to tell you is because all the people that have been complying incessantly and being the ones that are actually moving the agenda along, once you tell them to their face, this is exactly what's going to happen in the next two months. And you use a crystal ball and you give them a 100% accurate prediction. They're finally they're going to make the, the realization like that. that this isn't about their health and safety and it's about control. All and when they get that in their head, nobody is going to comply with that vaccine passport. What kind of resistance have we seen already? We started a group in BC about a week ago using the same wonderful woman from Corduroy's restaurant who organized the BC businesses against the lockdowns, which got BC open in May when we weren't open in July. So it makes a difference, people. She already, yeah, big difference. She already has guess how many people in the group, and I didn't even check it yet today. It's probably way more. Over 80,000 BC businesses have already signed on to say no to the vaccine passport. So it's not, it doesn't look like any of them will be going hungry or losing any of their services anytime soon. And in Ontario, a group similar to that had only 3,200 people in it yesterday more, around 2.30 p.m. I posted it on my Telegram, and the last time I checked, it was right before I spoke last night, around 7.30, 8 o'clock, and it already had almost 13,000 businesses. <laughs> and it, yeah, it's going to keep growing, because everybody values their rights and freedoms. I'm talking to Canadians that are retired, wealthy, not even living in Canada, double jab, scared of COVID because they're old, they're not very healthy. But when the vaccine passport came in, these people started jumping out of the sidelines. They don't want to see this for their children and their grandchildren. They don't want to go to their graves with their money knowing that their family is going to be enslaved for generations. So all the government is doing is uniting us. And they're going to try to divide us. So what's going to happen? And how are they going to do it? These evil bastards. <laughs> you already know they've been doing predictive programming to let you know another lockdown's coming. So what, how are they going to do it to benefit themselves? First of all, Trudeau's going to win the election. Sorry. Spoiler alert. It's so ridiculous, they have to literally cancel his events. Imagine if Trudeau came and got a crowd like this in Windsor. No, I saw Trudeau in Calgary, and he had nobody in the crowd, and he made that ridiculous comment about how people don't have the right to sit next to people who are vaccinated if they're unvaccinated. And it was like his big mic drop moment, and the crowd just was... Even the paid people didn't even cheer for him. So we have a prime minister that that's, that's that popular, but he's still going to win. And then, right away, they're going to talk about rising cases. You're going to see all the people, especially the ones that took a third jab, getting sick. And they're going to wonder why. They're going to look for answers. So the government, of course, is going to provide those wonderful answers. It's a new variant. They're going to call it COVID-22, Delta Plus, uh, Super Strain, whatever the hell they're going to call it. Remember all those wonderful keywords I just said, by the way. I hope this is being recorded because I love when I pick the exact words they use <laughs> before they use them. <laughs> And guess what? Know, They're going to blame that new is, variant that's, that's making the vaccinated people sick on the unvaccinated. Yep. Yep. And if you thought the division sick on the unvaccinated, yep. Yep. and if you thought the division between the maskers and the non-maskers was bad, Imagine how much they're going to hate us when they're actually getting sick and their family members are actually dying. And yeah. the, every time they turn on the TV, the TV is telling them, your people are dying, your vaccinated people are dying because of these filthy, unvaccinated, dangerous terrorists. Joe Biden called us terrorists in the yep. United States. Yep. Terrorists. Yep. He's a terrorist. Terrorists okay. for not taking the jab. And, telling, and then Mitt Romney made a comment today saying that, our free, yeah, our our freedom we'll puts see. his health at risk. Who lives? Facts oh, I'm sorry, lives. Mitt. Maybe you shouldn't have tried to be president of the United States then. Maybe you should have went to China. Anyways, this is the, what they're going to do. And instead of allowing it to divide us, if you go and tell them all this is going to happen, and it happens bit by bit, as you say... Are they going to be inclined to believe the government? Are they going to be inclined to believe that the government made them sick with the vaccine? The truth. That's the truth. The vaccine is getting people sick. If you want evidence of this, look around the world. Iceland has almost 100% of their adults given at least one jab. They're having a massive outbreak. Singapore admits that Singapore admits that they have 75% of their cases from the vaccinated. 
Israel has one of the highest vaccinated populations in the world, a massive death rate. A place like Russia has like a 16% vaccination rate. And they're not dying. They're not going, they're not in like ridiculous well, lockdowns. Stream, but you so know who are? The people that comply. Have you seen Australia? Australia is Canada three months from now because they're already in winter. And at last I checked, they're rating, yeah, let me say that again, they're rating an average of 2,800 homes per day Just for compliance long, checks because you're, you're not allowed to go more than five kilometers from your house or you're not allowed more than one hour of exercise per day. And if you try to step out of these rules, there are very swift and harsh punishments. A gentleman tried. He tried to leave his five kilometer radius and he did, he got out. They grabbed him, they charged him, they sentenced him and they put him in jail all within 24 hours for eight months. Yeah, that's literally a kangaroo court, literally. <laughs> and that's what they're gonna do here if we allow. They already brought the military into Australia. And if you look, they actually brought the military into Canada as well, somewhere in the Northwest Territories, a little town. They used the they used the excuse that 25% uh, of the town had COVID. So they sent the military to help. And by help, that means they're gonna surround the town and tell them all to take the vaccine and they're not gonna leave until they take it. And because they're an isolated little town, it's gonna work. And that's what they call a training operation. And they're gonna try to do that here. They're gonna try to isolate you from your friends and family. They're gonna make checkpoints between the provinces. Then they're gonna make checkpoints within the provinces if we let them yeah. and that's why if you tell everybody what's going to happen and it starts to unfold before their eyes they're going to wake up and how do i know this is true i wouldn't be here wasting my time if it wasn't hell i couldn't even drive here it's gotten to the point where people will try to take pictures of us while we're driving on the highway because everybody not people at the freedom rally not people that care about the election just the average canadian knows that this is bullshit and they all are aware of what's going on and i am a symbol i am a symbol that represents what people think and feel but are too afraid to say well i'm not afraid to say it and that's why they keep arresting me every other day but besides the point oh my gosh i'm sorry i'm trying not to spill the water on it i'm trying to do all 10 things at once but yeah Ladies and gentlemen, the path forward is clear. If we don't act, I get, I, right before I got here, I was on the Alex Jones show while we were driving. This is how I have to get forward! Literally, on Zoom. Yeah. On, while, while she was driving, obviously. I'm not allowed to drive, of course. But yeah, we did Alex Jones, and he asked me that question. He's like, Chris, as the leading activist in the world, thank you, Alex. What do you think will be in three years if the people do nothing? You really want to know, guys? Dead. You're going to have a digital currency, a digital passport, a digital ID, and a digital vaccine passport all tied to one in your little digital identity. Yep. And if your vaccine's not up to date, you're not going to be able to access your digital wallet or your other things. So you're not going to be able to even forget being locked out of a store. You're going to be locked out of your money if you don't take the jab. We're not and at scared. that point, they're going to start taking other liberties away from you. You heard the phrase, build back better. You're going to hear it more and more and more. That's cold word for, we're going to use environmental regulations and the threat of global uh, or climate change, we don't call global warming anymore, to take more of your rights and freedoms and take your private property rights. Because the rest, this entire thing is about consolidation of wealth. Now it's going to be consolidation of property. And then it's going to be consolidation of lives. And what I mean by that is, they already told you, you're going to own nothing but be happy. They just lie. They, they, they just like, they switch a few words in there. You will own nothing Winds and they there, yeah. will be happy is what they meant to say. Welcome to my life. But what does your life look like? And I'm talking like maybe not three years, but this is five years away if we do nothing. This is, I'm going to give you a little glimpse into the future. The average person lives in 150 square feet. If you're, in a, if you're a couple like us, you'll be living in 250 square feet. You may or may not have your own bathroom depending on your social status. It may be a dorm-like bathroom you share with the rest of your building. You don't live in a normal condo, you live in a giant building complex yep. where your Starbucks is, your grocery store, uh, your gym, your hairdresser, basically everything you need. So you never have to leave your home, which is convenient because you're not gonna be able to have a car. 
You're not even going to be able to afford a bike. In fact, if you have to travel at all, you're going to walk outside, and there'll be an e-bike station like you see all over the place popping up. Only you'll walk over, you'll scan your little barcode on your wrist, and your digital ID will pop up, and you'll see if you're up to date on your vaccinations, or see if you have a high enough social credit score. Yes, a social credit score. If you come to places like this, if you take pictures with people like me, or if you say things like me, your credit score drops, and the more it drops, the more privileges you lose. But if you're all green, now you can scan your wallet, which is your wrist, and you can rent that e-bike for the amount of time the GPS tells you it's gonna take you to get from point A to point B. That's gonna be your life. You're never gonna get a house, no, no, you're no. never gonna do it, any gonna traveling, be, no, gonna and you're gonna have one child if you're lucky, and that child's gonna live just like you. And at that point, we're not individuals. We don't have rights. At that point, we're literally individual little blips on a screen where they can just flick a switch, and even quicker and easier than getting rid of a fly, you're done. And that's where you'll be in five years if you don't stand up now. So we're in the phases of united non-compliance. I'm gonna break them down for you. The first one, we already passed it. That was the global awakening. That was 2020. That's when people like me and other people like me spoke all around the world and woke people up to the reality that this isn't about health and safety, this is about control. Very simple. Once people understand that, and you alter that perception just that slightly, all the propaganda that used to scare them will now make them angry and more willing to act. That's what being awake means. And once you're awake, you can't go back to sleep, and you can wake up others. So that was the global awakening. Now awake and aware. But they're just scared and didn't know what to do. So that's where phase two comes in. Taking action. And how do we take action? I already told you, we organized groups of businesses that defied lockdowns and got BC open months in advance. We're organizing groups against the vaccine passports. We're organizing a massive worldwide strike on September 1st for everybody, everybody listen carefully. Students, teachers, federal workers, frontline workers, cops, firefighters, everybody. You're gonna strike on September 1st. We're gonna let them know that private or federal, nobody's getting any mandates. We all have freedom of choice. I don't care who you work for, where you work, how long you've had your job, how important your school is. Nothing is more important than preserving the country that you grew up in for your children and their grandchildren. So that's where we're gonna make our first point. And if they don't, if they have, if they still want to go ahead, if Trudeau still wants to be a little Mr. Dictator, he wants to be more like Castro every day. It's bad. I'm not implying anything by that, by the way. Except his dictatorial tendencies. But no, seriously, if we do nothing, we are screwed. Because I already told you what's going to happen. If we stand up for ourselves. We win. It's that simple. Exactly. And once we do that, we can move on to phase three of United Noncompliance, which is my favorite yet. part, and that's holding these people accountable. Yeah. 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 That's when we can focus on a political solution. After we've taken our rights and freedoms back. All these people keep telling me, Chris, we want you to run for prime minister. And I keep telling everybody, I'm like, I keep telling you there's no such thing as a political solution to this. And now you're telling me to go give you a political solution to this. And I said, it doesn't work like that, people. No, you're not getting out of this without a little personal responsibility. Yeah. And, I, and I, they did make a poll on Twitter. It had 15,000 votes. It had me versus Jagmeet versus Bernier and versus Trudeau. And me versus Bernier and versus Trudeau. And I got 66% of the vote. <laughs> so it was pretty, it was pretty embarrassing. But, and I told everybody, if you really want something like that to happen, you have to make phase two of United Noncompliance happen first. So I'm going to say it here, and I've started saying it everywhere now, because I want to unite the people to stand with me. If you people stand with me at United Noncompliance, the day we abolish the vaccine passport is the day I will announce my candidacy Woo! for Prime Minister yeah! and my plan to take over the country. Yeah! And we have a good plan to make sure lockdowns never happen again. Listen to it, it's foolproof. Why do we get lockdowns? We have 338 ridings in our country, and every single one of them is occupied by a public sector parasite we call politicians from whatever political party they may be, even if they're independent. They're still public sector parasites that we call politicians. So what did they lose in lockdown? 
Answer, absolutely nothing. They gained the power of gods over you. They got more money, more power. They didn't have to abide by any restrictions. So they literally created a, a, a world where they're up here and you're down here. So then every time we had a vote to rescind or extend lockdowns, guess what happened? The politicians would unanimously vote to extend the lockdowns. Even though the people unanimously didn't want to extend the lockdowns. What a shocker. I wonder why they were doing that. So imagine if you replace those 338 public sector parasites with 338 private sector business people with their own businesses, their own networks, people that would never vote for another lockdown because they actually lost something in this lockdown. They have skin in the game. They understand how important small businesses to our economy and best of all they know how to run a business so they wouldn't run annual deficits in every single district we have in the country imagine that imagine a country that was run efficiently instead of run on debt and hopes and dreams and imagine a country that had people in power that none of them would vote for another lockdown that's the start of protecting us from this that's how we actually make real change but it has to come from you first you have to show everybody in the world, not me. Everyone in the world is watching Canada right now. Australia is a testing ground. It's an island. That's why they're going so hard there. Canada is the light of the world. Everywhere you go in the world, people look to Canada as a beacon of light, freedom, and hope. It's that simple. And that's why they're coming at us hard. Because if we fall, if we lay down in this fight and they do what they want to do to us, the rest of the world, like dominoes, will follow. They know this. They're striking at the very heart of the world. That's where we are right now. I know that sounds a little crazy, but it's not. Because a lot of countries never had the rights and freedoms of Canada. A lot of countries don't have the ability to be what Canada can be if run properly for the people, by the people. There is an opportunity here to not be the example that they want, but to make an example that we want. An example that the rest of the world can follow and we can get freedom, not only for us, but for our brothers and sisters all around the world. And ladies and gentlemen, the only way that happens is when you just say no to this government tyranny. I wrote a book. It's called Just Say No. Arrest Trudeau for treason! Amazon gave me a publishing deal. I jumped through all their hoops. Wednesday. I did everything I could do. I did a tour to launch the book. I actually got arrested the day before the tour. I'm sure that was just a coincidence. I'm sure they weren't trying to stop the launch of the tour. And I'm sure it was another coincidence that hours before launch, Amazon sent me an email that my book became the first book in the history of the world to be granted a publishing and distribution deal by Amazon and then banned before it could go on sale. What's so scary about my book? It's about 10 hours of me talking, like I'm talking to you now, spitting straight facts, transcribed, and structured in a way that explains exactly what's going on now, where we could go from now, or where we will go from now if we do nothing. It's the most relevant book probably of our generation. I'm sorry I have to say that because this is probably the most drastic event that we've all experienced in our lifetimes and probably our parents' lifetimes. So that's why they banned it. Because they, they can't mischaracterize it like they can me. Oh, look at his hair, look at his teeth, look at his muscles, look at his tank top. These words speak for themselves. They can't be twisted. They can't be misconstrued. And it will wake up anybody who you can get to read it. So if you have people in your workplace that you want to get on board with the vaccine, uh, getting on board with denying the vax pass or getting on board with denying mandates in general, this is how you do it. I've had multiple people call me up and tell me they just passed the book around the workplace and just <laughs> and like a beacon of light. Everyone that read it was just all of a sudden one of us. There's nothing more powerful than the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's why they locked me up, and that's why they try to make an example of me, because they want you to, they want, they know, they know they can't discredit what I say. But the more they try to argue me, that's why no politician will ever debate me. Because if they try, I tell the truth, all they do is lie, they'll get exposed, they'll get obliterated. They won't even engage with me in any type of conversation. And that's why the only thing they can do 
is try to make an example of me and try to do things so bad to me that it scares other people from telling the truth. Doctors aren't t not telling you not to take the vaccine because the vaccine's safe. Doctors aren't saying anything because they've been threatened to lose their license and lose their job and lose their careers and even worse in some cases. This is a massive pressure on all of us in all angles. So I understand where you're coming from. But it is minuscule in compared to the suffering past generations endured, and it's minuscule compared to the suffering we will endure so if you do not stand up as soon as this passport is implemented, which it will be. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some amazing shirts here. They say Chris for PM, and nothing's going to piss off Trudeau more than if we get a lot of people wearing them. I also have copies of my book, and I know there's a lot of people that probably want to take pictures, meet, etc. So I guess we're gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I, I know I had you guys wait in here, so I'll stay here for as long as it takes till the freaking sun comes down. So everybody that's here that wants a picture, wants to talk to me, gets to talk to me. I'm gonna be right over here, just under the little thing there, so everyone can find me. We'll bring all the merch and stuff, and I look forward to chatting with all of you. I love you all. Thank you so much for having me. worth the wait or what right this guy says what he means there's no bullshit and he says it the way it is we need more of that so we were originally going to going to march to the health unit uh so chris went through a lot to come down here today if you guys are okay with this because this is a democracy should we hang out with our good friend chris a little longer and then we'll see about the march later are you guys cool with that all right it's decided Thank you for your patience, Windsor. We love you. It was worth it, wasn't it, guys? God bless you. Thank you. Just, just give Chris a little bit of room, you guys. It's hot. Okay? Yeah. I'm done, people. Thanks for joining.